here as it was on the way back. Right. Do you feel your right arm actually straightening? I feel the right arm straightening as I start my downswing and it's going to create more width for me. Right, and I think the key being, when you feel it straightening, you're actually not losing the angle here, right. retaining the wrist angle. Retaining the, the wrist angle and, and the uh, set in the wrists on the way down until they release earlier down here. Right. So, certainly, I think the big thing is understanding this change of direction happens with your body movement, but also, big thing, feeling what your right arm's doing. So, getting back to that right arm position, that the fault that many players have, getting the right arm out of position, gets the club too steep, and then having to make a compensation. Okay, one of the drills that we've done for a long time is to tee the ball up. I normally use a six or a seven iron in this drill. Tee the ball up fairly high. Now, one thing that I always try and do is not to hit it too hard. I'm always just trying to do the motion. Hold the club in my right hand. I'll just move back here, Nick, if you don't mind. I'll choke down a little bit on it. And just a nice swing with the right hand. That's good. Well, that, that gives you the feeling of the shallowing, the feeling of your right arm straightening and gives you the sensation of width, doesn't it? It's very difficult to hit the ball if you're narrow in here, Dave, because you really have to rotate your body out very quickly to get the club back to the ball. So what this does, it just helps me to swing my right arm freer and, as you say, get the club a little shallow on the way down. It's really like throwing a ball. If you watch any of those great pitches or anybody throwing a ball, they move back in as they change direction. It's like their arm actually moves this way. It's a, right. a distinct shallowing effect, and that obviously creates a situation where you get the path right, coming back to the ball, keeps the club face square, no manipulation, and you know you hit a lot of good shots. Well, we also we always heard that people like to keep the right elbow close to the body on the way down, yeah, and yeah. I think it's very difficult, as we've discussed, to get any kind of uh, club head or, or hand speed if the right elbow is close to the body. So even a good pitcher, you'll see that he's right elbow is away from his body when he throws the ball. The question I get asked a lot by the good players I teach is what about leg action? And I see a lot of faults in this area and I think probably some of it stems back from the fact that people used to be taught to drive their legs. I know when we were taught as juniors, we were often taught to really drive the legs hard from the top of the swing toward the target. And as you can see, what that happens is I get my body in a boat position and my shoulders very steep. And it's very hard to get the club back to square from there. You almost have to flip it with your hands. And I'll show you, maybe you'll recognize this swing. Huh? <laughs> well, there's a nice reverse C. You can see this position here. That's a chiropractor's dream, that position. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's true, because I think obviously the legs, I mean, they are important because for balance more than anything else. And if you just drive your legs, you know, get this right knee driving as quick as you can, it sort of puts the upper body in such a position in a position where you're so far behind it, now you've got to use your hands more to help to hit it. Right, why don't you show us how to do it? All right, well, you know, a little drill that I think uh, is important to really help this is to actually set up to it and actually hook your left foot in. You can see I've actually got my foot hooked in in this position because one thing this does, it allows you, as you change direction, to get the feeling that you've got a little bit of a leg separation, a little bit of a sit here. I mean, Sam Sneed was probably most known for this particular movement and a little bit of a leg separation and then really hit into the left side because what you want to do is turn around your left side rather than slide by it and if your left knee works too far forward as you illustrated there obviously it's going to put you in this position where you're right. too far underneath it so okay. let's have a go here so you want to start off gently here you know you don't want to pull in your ligaments or anything so just hook the left foot in gently so you'll feel some pressure on the inside and then just pretty much try to make the normal swing from there just a nice gentle movement to start with very good. Now, I say, you feel some strain down here, and it really forces you to get your right side going. So this way, with a little bit of work, you can really get
get a sensation of what a solid leg action is all about. Okay, I'm going to ask you to give that a go now. Okay. All right. I think the other thing that we've monkey got to see monkey do, you know. <laughs> the other thing we really got to stress here is that you, when you do all these drills, you don't want to hit the ball too hard. No, exactly. You really want to just try and get the move down. Right. So, so there's my normal left foot position. Right. Hook so it I'll in. So I'll it in here. There you go. Spend a little bit of tension in the left, and just. Very good. That looks more like the feel like my Nick chest Price swing. My chest is aiming at the target a lot better than the other way. Right. And I just wanted you to hit a regular one, and because the whole key with doing these little drills is that you're trying to get the sensation. All these drills that we've been working on, basically or to give people the feel. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's one thing to say, well, listen, I don't want you to do this, or I want you to do that, but how do we get the body to feel? And all these little drills really help to give one the sensation of what should take place. So if you do it often enough, hopefully it'll become an integral part of your swing. In other words, muscle memory. Right. Okay. You know, it's amazing over the years how your leg action has calmed down so much more. Now, it doesn't mean your legs aren't working because Really, the quieter your legs are as you start down, the more speed you can have through impact. Where a lot of people go wrong is that they drive their legs and then actually come into the ball, the legs aren't moving at all. Right, and one of the things that's happened to me is that as my legs have got quieter, I've started to hit the ball further. That's right, so remember, for sure they provide some power, but they also provide resistance. So it allows you to wind and unwind your upper body. So what I'd like you to do, Nick, is hit one more shot for me, and I'm gonna stand behind you and just put this glove right next to your okay. left hip. And the whole key being is that obviously you swing back and as you move away from it to swing it back, now you swing into the shaft here and then turn inside it. And I'm sure when you notice, just swing through to the finish here, you finish flat on that left foot. Players who drive their legs tend to roll to the outside of their foot too much. Okay, well let's go ahead and we'll see if we can keep the shaft in position here. Impact has often been described as the moment of truth. Obviously, where your club, where your body are at impact, determine how the ball's going to fly. And I think a lot of good players have misinterpreted where they should be at impact. You hear all sorts of things, Nick, like, well, try to return to your dress position at impact. Well, that might be okay for the hands and the club, but certainly you want to get your body open. Sure, your hips need to be somewhat open, which most good players are, but the upper body as well, because if you get your upper body too square, and this happens through pulling the club to, the, to a large extent. The upper body's too square. In fact, you're gonna to be too far back here and then you're actually gonna to have to use your hands. So what we're talking in terms of, obviously, is trying to get the upper body more open so the right side can really help to release the club. Yeah, and we've got to remember that the right side delivers an awful lot of power in the golf swing. Exactly, and you know, golf really is a two-sided game. So I feel now coming into the ball that your left side in actual fact is resisting to some extent while your right side and certainly your upper body is really going forward towards the target. And if you can do that, it helps to keep the club on line without having to manipulate it. Hey, what's this? I thought we were doing a golf video here. What are you doing well, with a tennis racket? If this tape doesn't work, Nick, people can always take up tennis. <laughs> <laughs> But what is to really illustrate is the fact that, you know, the right side really has to work. It's very much like hitting a forehand in tennis. And, you know, that big ball's too easy. I'm going to use a small <laughs> ball here. But basically, in a forehand in tennis, your left foot is forward, and you're using your right side to actually release the racket. So the same thing happens in golf. So we're trying to feel that the right side actually works. See, a lot of people have a fear, good players have a fear, of using their right side because they think, hey, well, they're going to hook it if they use their right side. They hear, well, too much right hand, too much right arm. But if you use your right side correctly, in actual fact, it'll keep the face square through the ball. Right, and on the same theme, is that another drill that we've devised and we've used for quite a long time now, is uh, if you just take your normal stance. Okay. You want right. to put that club down there, David, so I can show where we're aiming. All right, there you go. Okay, and then we'll put the left foot a little closer to the ball, we we'll right. drag the right foot back behind the left foot here. Right. Almost, so the toes are almost in line with the heel, right? Right. Now, okay, making so. sure that your shoulders are square, because there's a tendency to get your shoulders to follow the line of your feet. Right, so, so you know, only your feet are closed, right. correct? Okay. Basically, what this is going to do is when I start down my downswing, I'm going to make sure that my left shoulder clears and allows my right side to deliver the, the club onto the ball. Okay. 
shoulders are square. Okay, so you feel that your left shoulder really starts to move, so it's like your left side moves first and then your right side follows up. Right. Okay, let's do that again. Okay. 